All right, welcome everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use mask and adjustment layers to kind of quickly create uh, focus uh, in a in a page or a panel without having to actually you know, recolor anything or even you know shade anything in, in the way that you would normally um, think to darken or or lighten things. And this is a it's a really cool technique that um, I've started to use more and more. And so I wanted to show that to you guys today. And there's a couple of things you need to understand before we get into this. So the first are the way that masks work in Photoshop. And there's a billion ways that you can use masks. I'm just going to touch on a couple today. I'm still figuring out tricks uh, here and there on ways you can make this work for you. So, so all I have here is a, a blue circle on a gray background. And normally if if i was rendering this you know i would you know highlight that section you know i usually copy it to a new layer and then i could go in and you know render on top of that if i wanted to however i wanted to render that uh, circle or whatever it is and that's one way to do it but another way you can do this is um, with a mask and i'm just going to use this to illustrate kind of how a mask works so a couple things I'm going to show here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the circle again and this time I'm going to go down to the bottom of the layer window and if you mouse over that little uh, rectangle with a circle in it, it says add layer mask. Okay, so with that selected I'm going to click that button and you're not going to see any changes. You're just going to see a new little symbol pop up here and but what that does is it masks off everywhere that you see black in that little symbol there. So in this case, let me get a bright brush here. So if I go back into my um, circle here, you can see there's nothing selected. I don't have anything um, selected right now. And if I try to, if I start painting this, I can't go outside the lines, no matter how hard I try, okay? So if I'm coloring this, uh, no matter what I do, it's not going to go outside that mask. Now if I turn that mask off, just temp disable it temporarily, you can see what I actually you know, did there. But I'm going to re-enable that. So that's, that's uh, one way you can use a mask to kind of control your uh, rendering, I guess you could say. Um, and with a mask, what you do, if you want to uh, remove or hide something, you paint with black on the mask itself. So you can paint on the color on this side, or you can paint on the mask itself with the uh, with little mask symbol here. So, for example, if I'm going to make uh, another mask, and let me do this, we just make a new layer, and I'm going to fill it with something really different this green. Oh, that is offensive. Uh, how about that? Kind of a pukey. Uh, orange or olive yellow. I don't know what the hell you call that. So you see that I've got the whole uh, layer filled with that color. So I'm going to go back to the mask button, create a new mask, and again, nothing changes. I'm going to fill it with black on the little mask symbol here. That's, again, that's highlighted, not the color itself, but the mask. When I fill that with black, it completely disappears, okay, because it's masked off the entire uh, image. Now, if I go back in here with white or any shade of white you can see it's adding that yellow in here okay just like it would be if I was painting with yellow but I'm not I'm just you know we're looking at the mask here and you can see in that uh, little symbol there as I color it's changing there in the uh, in the uh, little mask symbol window there so and again I can paint with white or I can switch to black and I can take away so this is what they no call like non-destructive editing because it's not actually affecting the yellow underneath itself. We're just affecting the mask. So it's easy, even if I had, you know, uh, a million colors on the uh, um, on the color itself. Let me see here. Get that to. Uh, why is that not? Oh, there we go. Uh, it's the same color, that's why. So if I go under this, changing the color underneath, you can still see that it's only affecting the masked area. And even these areas we can't see, if I go back to my mask, 
and start painting this out, you can see what I did underneath. Okay, so it takes a little getting used to. You definitely play with it, rewatch the video a couple times if you need to, to, uh, to kind of figure out what's going on there playing with those. So now that we know what masks are, there's one other thing that I want to point out here, and that's adjustment layers. We're going to be combining these things very shortly. So adjustment layers right next to the max mask symbol is a little half moon uh, thing here. So if I go to that, you can see all these different adjustments here. And let me tell you why you would want to do an adjustment. So let's say that I like my... Let me go in here and actually do some rendering here real quick. So let's say that I just love my rendering here on this circle and I don't want to mess with my rendering, but I do want to brighten it or maybe darken it. Well, if I, I could go in here and go to hue saturation and, and play with that or make adjustments, but once I change it, you know, my original colors are gone. I can only undo so many times before they're gone forever. So instead of doing that, make an adjustment layer. And we'll call it hue saturation. That's an easy one. And adjustment layers come with mask automatically attached. You can see there. So, so again, if I go to my hue adjustment layer, open this up. Actually, it's already open right here. I can make my saturation adjustment or my hue adjustment or whatever in the world I want to make here. And all I have to do is turn it off to get back to the original. So adjustment layers affect everything below it. So even if I throw a new layer in here and do something else on top, then that hue uh, saturation adjustment still affects everything below that. But it won't affect anything that's above it. So if I go back to my hue saturation again. So you know, combining this with your flats, you can do some really uh, you know, using your flats to create selections, you can do some really cool stuff with that. Now, and again, like I said, you have a mask attached to this. So, again, that means I could go in and remove some of that hue saturation change with the mask part there. Or I can switch to white and put it back in. And the whole time, all I gotta do is turn it off to go back to the original. So, again, I know it's really technical, um, so I hope you guys are following along, but we are almost ready to put this into practice here. So, so now we've got adjustment layers and we've got mask and you guys will be experts on that after you practice a little bit. So let me show you kind of a real world scenario here and how you would use this. So let me go ahead and just delete these that I did earlier. All right. So let's say that I did my coloring here and I like it, but and let's say I'm doing this for a cover, and I really want to uh, say I really want to draw attention to you know uh, just this area even more. Okay, it's already, of course, it's rendered a little bit more. It's a little bit brighter, and there's more contrast going on here than anything else. But let's say I want to really push that just for the sake of the lesson. So I'm going to make a new layer. Actually, I'm going to make a new adjustment layer on top. So I'm going to go back to my adjustment layer symbol here and go to, uh, what do I want to do? Let's go to Levels. And so with Levels, you know, I can darken the image or I can brighten it. I can do different things here. So I'm going to grab this left trigger and just uh, pull that in a little bit. All right, so it's darkened everything. And maybe I'm saying, well, it's just too dark. I really just want to you know, darken uh, around her so that it draws more focus to the middle. So again, I can get my just black and get just a big soft brush here. This is just a really soft brush. And now with, with black, I can paint over this and you can see in the little layer window, it's adding the black over there. But now it's, it's letting me really just focus on the areas that I wanna show through that. And it's leaving the adjustment that I did everywhere else. And you can have as many of these as you want. Uh, so if I wanted to go in here and make another adjustment layer for like exposure. Now exposure can get pretty crazy pretty quickly. You can see it like totally oversaturates things. But uh, just as an example, so I can bump the exposure up just a little bit. Now I can toggle this to show you guys the difference. So that's with the exposure on all the way. 
But again, let's say ah, it's a little much. I, I just want to focus on her uh, upper body here. So I can go to my, again, go with black. And I can paint in here along the edges. And you can see that it's, it's hiding um, the effect from those areas because I'm painting with black. And let's say that I you know, mess this up and I go across the middle, which I could always undo that. But I can, I can switch to white and cover it back up again. And again, this looks kind of weird. I'm not saying this looks good, but I'm just, I'm just trying to uh, make a point here. Um, another way, one more way you could do this, and actually on the original image on this one, I did use a uh, uh, adjustment layer on this one. So let's say that this image again, I want to, I want it to be a little bit more of a nighttime scene. I want to really, you know, show that um, kind of bluish, green, purplish night color on everything without. Uh, affecting the entire image so I can do a there's a solid color option on my adjustment layer and it's going to ask you what color you want to choose I'm just going to choose like a dark saturated blue here so I've got a, a a color fill adjustment layer so it's just that one color it's set to normal and if you watch my color mode video you guys have seen this before but I'm going to set the mode to color Alright, so everything's got this kind of blue shifted color here, and I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit because it's too much of an effect, let's say. And so now I have this blue layer in color mode affecting the entire image. But again, you can see it's got a mask attached to it also. So I can switch to a black, go get my uh, big soft brush again, and maybe I, I really don't want that effect as much here. And I'm just, I'm, you know, barely touching the uh, tablet here to, uh, so there's not a lot of, of opacity coming through here. But I could go really harder and get, you know, a bigger effect. Um, you can see that, especially like if I do that there. So, so now I've still got my blue effect everywhere else, but where it really matters in the image, you know, I've got less of an effect there. And of course, there's, uh, you know a lot of ways you could go in and make more adjustments or um, do those things and and again you have your flats down here so if if I just want to say uh, I don't know say I just want to for some reason I want to change this building to to not have that effect so I've used my flats to select that building then I can go back to my layer and again just paint with that black and you can see that effects going away so you can use that in conjunction with your flats, you know, to kind of work together there. And um, so, yeah, that's uh, adjustments with adjustment layers and mask. And we didn't have to actually recolor anything. So um, that's a huge help. It, it's a, it, I've used it a lot to, again, kind of pull focus to certain panels. That there's a whole lot going on. And in the rendering, I, I wasn't able to to do quite as much as I wanted. It can be really subtle, but it can make a really big difference in creating those really strong focal points. Um, if you guys have listened to my videos uh, for a while, you know I talk about storytelling quite a bit. And rendering and your quality of your lighting and shadow is not as important as the page reading properly. And making sure that the reader's eye is focusing on the right places, that's really what coloring is all about from a storytelling standpoint. So. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, subscribe to the channel um, and check the description. I've got a link to my coloring course down there. I go into all the specifics and a lot of this stuff, even more uh, detail there. Uh, and again, like the video if you get it. If you did, give me a thumbs up there. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.